आई वी एम यूर लिस्निंग टू टी एफ जी फुटबॉल Hello and welcome to another episode of TFG Indian Football Podcast. It's that time of the year again when the I League is entering the last day of its competition and we have two clubs who are vying for the title playing in two different games at the same time and we will be looking at a split screen what's happening in this game what's happening in that game who's scoring here who's scoring there all the permutations uh, and the maths coming into play uh, with the teams being separated by just one point and it could be anybody's game anybody's game at the end of the day and it won't be over until the very last minute uh, kevin is with me dude i league just keeps on giving like fourth time in five years we have the league title race lasting till the last day and uh, it's a third year in a row where we have we're going to have to look at two simultaneous matches to find out who won the league this is awesome huh yeah, it just gets better and better i think from the time we've heard about i league uh, uh, getting it to its final days or final uh, season I think that this will makes it more interesting it much much more spicy every time uh, we we uh, feel this is the last season of Ily and uh, it has happened uh, you know so many times now and again uh, we look at it could have been one winner it could have been two winners now over years we we've seen the title race gets just so tighter it, it's not that uh, that uh, these two uh, teams were decided some time back you no know, about two weeks three weeks back we had three it, it was a three way tie real kashmir was in the hand uh, chelsea brothers just went away i think a uh, couple of matches and and this is a fall out it would have been the same case that uh, we we seen last year as well on on the final we had three or four teams looking at uh, uh, clinching the title and it just would have been a similar story but right now we are looking at the gap of one one point so that close it is and no it is it, it, it's still anybody's game we're yeah. talking about chennai city uh, uh probably getting the upper hand because they are with 1.1 point advantage but they're playing champions of india obviously they are the outgoing champion winner of punjab and uh, gokulam kerala will be uh, uh, facing east bengal so haven't we seen uh, gokulam doing you know wonders uh, with, with their gameplay with their foreigners is just one more interesting match day coming up for us talking about uh, the other way as well uh, ISL is entering the playoffs I think I think this is where it gets exciting no it, it wasn't really uh, till we were, we've seen a league leader uh, second time running but right now it's the stage of you know it, it's the culmination of indian football in going into the next phase yeah definitely man so many just uh, imagine the implications uh, for chennai city fc they are uh, on on the verge of or they have the chance of becoming the first club from tamil nadu to be the champions of india you know not isl winners not private tournament or cup winners the real champions of india the the club that won the top division league uh, for the first time from tamil nadu they have that historic opportunity east bengal of, co- of course they won the nfl uh, but uh, you know that was what the top division league was called back then but ever since the name was changed to i think they have never won it once and this might be as you said the last season of i league and uh, yeah it, it's it's historic for them as well they've uh, never gotten their hands on the new i league trophy that that's handed out to the winners now and what what story it would be for them if they finally get the trophy on the very last season and now they could claim that trophy forever like this is uh, this trophy is ours now because we were the last ones to win it and nobody took it from us so yeah this there's a good chance they will be playing in isl next season uh, we we heard uh, uh, only yesterday there was a meeting between kushal das the iff general secretary uh, and uh, ajit isaac who's the ceo of east bengal 
and uh, yeah of the field a lot of drama is happening but for today let's just keep that aside uh, in the second half of this show today we will bring you all the uh, detailed analysis of the uh, two matches which will be in our attention uh, on uh, saturday which will decide who will be the next champions of india and uh, before that though we got uh, some other issues to look at uh, chennai fc that that was another historic i mean what this this week is historic for tamil nadu football uh, chennai fc became the first uh, club from tamil nadu in in decades uh, i think uh, in the, in the modern era of indian football there were other clubs from tamil nadu who played in asia before but uh, chennai fc in the modern era of indian football ever since uh, the uh, new afc cup Uh, was instituted in 2005 uh, and 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 some years before that uh, in the in the league era i would i should say uh, they are the first ever uh, club from that state to play in the asian stage and uh, they were playing colombo fc and it didn't really go that well man i mean uh, what did you think was it j- just that they had a bad form going into the game uh, or was it just the heat and humidity of colombo was uh, holding them back from playing to their full potential uh, firstly the domestic form isn't great for them uh, nothing to carry forward uh, like a momentum so they they we lost on uh, on a good form to take into this tournament and and we expect uh, good quality teams to come to the afc cup at any level we're talking about qualifiers we're talking about a knockout stage or you know even the group stages So you you uh, uh, saw game really you know it, it was uh, not high on pace uh, it, it was really you know pass and movements not really off the ball uh, pacey uh, wing wing plays from uh, either team uh, it, it could be down to the weather but uh, no just talking about uh, how chennai approached this game uh, i i think they plan to probably use uh, the second half as the bait to go ahead and uh, get that crucial away goal uh but really it didn't work out as much as uh, i was expected because uh i i think you know it, it's very very important that a team plays together and uh, has that uh, momentum going into from tournament to tournament uh, it, it didn't really look like this was planned so well uh, because you know over, over uh, the number of games that uh, chennai played uh, we didn't say really them uh, coming on top of any of the games you know that just shows uh, by by the position that they are on the domestic table they're just lying at the bottom there and it's been the worst uh, finish for any team in the isl so that's really you know, very low on motivation uh, mm. to to take into any sort of uh, new campaign that you would want to so probably that is one reason that uh, we didn't really uh, see the, see the team shine uh, obviously uh, afc cup is much much you know of, of prestigious for the country as well Uh, but probably we could have uh, we we've seen a better planned team into mm. in this stage of the competition yeah i mean uh, one thing that stuck out to me about 15 or 20 minutes into the game was that so many long balls and i can't remember the last time i saw chennai fc use long balls like that it was like they they used to have a really good uh, you know uh, they used to have a lot of european players in the past uh, they still have some of that uh john gregory uh, provided a really good gritty performance last season uh, this time it has not worked out but still they they were way better at passing they were way better at uh, keeping the ball on the ground and building attacks actually like even when they are at their worst their midfield does not look like it does not exist as it did today i mean yesterday uh, that uh, just just start the attack from a defender the ball reaches a midfielder there's no through there's no uh, cross just blast the ball like up in the air and hope that it it goes somewhere near the target which it did not go i mean chennai fc hardly ever created a proper chance what what do you think that uh, you know what was the reason behind that was it uh, that they lost some of their extra foreigners they they could only keep four foreigners in the squad this time or uh, I don't know maybe they just were not really thinking about uh, you know using that pressing game this time you know what 
it was missing from the entire season of the IFL. You know, so not really surprising that they didn't uh, find the rhythm of going into this tournament with a lot of players. Uh, three Brazilians in the team there. Uh, two are pushed into the uh, into the defense, and uh, what do you expect from uh, 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 you know, players like uh, Isaac, who's not played too many games, so you have not seen them shine, and and that leads to the uh, the problem of uh, not playing enough. And uh, uh, no, you can't really put too much of dependency on Rafael Augusto, who's you know, probably playing with with uh, a team that is much more. It is a Colombo team wasn't. Uh, uh, an average ISL team. You know, we're talking about young players. Uh, you've got the pace, so you got to know the condition well. Mm. So, you, know, you can't really, you know, pull out the performances from your top players who, who not really, you know, shown enough against uh, uh, some of the better playing teams. Now, we're talking about, uh, yeah, Rafael Augusto is the main you know, center man, uh, the, the midfielder and the creative that you're expecting uh, for the game players. Uh, you know, to break out from the back and uh, playing into two balls for uh, uh, the ones who are playing up front. Uh, but I think in the second half, uh, what we saw is uh, you know, CK Vineet coming in, uh, Thoy Singh coming in. That really you know, influenced the game a lot. But uh, probably what we, what we could have seen is uh, these two players starting. Uh, Isaac, I, I, don't, I didn't know, uh, know uh, he was the best choice for playing into uh, the, the, the AFC level. We've seen CK Winnie with that uh, experience and uh, Toy Singh, obviously, you know, he's got the flair, he's got the pace and he's got that maturity at that level. So, mm. probably a choice of uh, Toy Singh and uh, Winnie and as a first half could have been uh, the difference there. Yeah, but uh, if, even when they came on, like both Toy Singh were uh, present at, at one point, Toy Singh and Winnie, the last 15 minutes, I think what John Gregory was banking on that having those fresh legs with that finishing ability uh, with the pace uh, and accuracy they would gain the upper hand and get that away goal in the uh, dying uh, minutes of the game but what we saw was all of a sudden it seemed like Colombo FC you know pulled together uh, or maybe maybe they were a bit starstruck or something uh, they have heard a lot about Chennai FC uh, and what they have accomplished in ISL in the past but they realized, look, these guys are not going to do shit, so let's just uh, keep pushing forward. And their midfield was creating the pressure. They were the ones who were looking like, yes, they are moving forward with an intent to score. And they actually got chances which were a, a tap in a way. At one point, I think uh, uh, their uh, winger, left winger, uh, sent a cross right into the uh, box which nobody got to. None of the Chennai players got to. Even the uh, goalkeeper missed it. And the striker of Colombo was just a couple of feet behind it. Otherwise, he would have just gotten a touch on that ball and it would have been the easiest goal to score ever. And uh, yeah, it, that would have been a disaster. Like uh, giving a team like Colombo FC, who look like they are more than capable of shutting down uh, Chennai FC, if they got a goal, you have a nightmare on your hands in the second leg. And uh, I mean, even even bringing on uh, th- this, I'm going back to the old point that th- uh, it did not seem like uh, Chennai NFC had a cohesive midfield. Even if you're bring- bringing on uh, CK Vinit, what good is that if you're not going to be able to service him through the midfield at all? So uh, seriously, I, it's it's a bit of an alarm bell for me. Uh, think because no uh, Indian club has ever failed to go through the AFC Cup qualifiers. It's like taken for granted that uh, we will beat the qualified teams and get into the group stage. Mohan Bagan beat Colombo FC twice and they were resting 5-6 of their uh, first team. Uh, and, and back then they only had four, four foreigners and they were playing two or three against Colombo FC and still won both legs. This is a bit of a disaster, man. <laughs> In terms of, this is not how you want to announce yourself at the Asian stage is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's fair. You know, even um, giving out uh, your new signings, uh, uh, the Australian uh, hmm. Chris, Chris Hurd was left out of the squad. Yeah. So really, uh, the, the intention was the tried and tested players, uh, the foreigners, the three, three key foreigners would uh, get you in the game, uh, probably get that uh, hmm. away goal. It didn't uh, click. And you know what? 
what you already have and what you've seen does not work for you something new is is difficult to get uh, results out of from mm yeah definitely uh, hopefully they uh, you know push through the second uh, leg and uh, get a get a goal i don't think they need more than one goal to beat colombo fc because at home chennai nfc will be playing under much better conditions they will have a, a bit more confidence i would assume uh, they will be uh, learning from the mistakes they did from this game and uh, uh, press harder and once colombo fc concede a goal they will be back in that mentality that oh shit we uh, uh, you know we thought we could handle ourselves but now we are a goal down uh, and and it's a similar thing happened uh even against mohan bagan colombo fc buckled in a similar way after mohan bagan got a goal so that breakthrough is all chennai nfc need and let's hope they get it on 13th march at trans stadium in ahmedabad and let's hope we get to see that game somehow live streaming uh, telecast now i'm not even hoping for telecast at this moment just just give us a stream anything please so yeah that's that's about that now uh, off to a topic which is uh, close to uh, kevin's heart uh, and i think his heart is about to break right now if you listen hard you can hear the cracks just expanding like <laughs> and then it just snaps like back into two <laughs> and uh, shilong lajong man i mean if you if you go back and uh, listen to the earlier episodes of this podcast right at the start of the season we said it we called it like shillong lajong are going in with the full knowledge that they are putting themselves in relegation's way and they're doing it because they know no matter what the hell they do they're going to get relegated because i league will be killed isl will be the top division and most clubs from i league will be forced to play in the second tier they knew they were going to get relegated anyway and they went ahead and they took it it's is just tragic given the way we have seen them play uh, seen uh, shillong lajong fight in the previous seasons and we just did not get a shillong lajong uh, the the full full fighting spirit of shillong lajong on display this season we, we just didn't have it well, it it was planned to go this way and shillong lajong by the way uh, no the ties that they have with the aif i think uh, that really helps them to plan better uh, when you know really It, it, it's a no way forward for you so you can really you not know, do much with the time or and the effort that you would want to put in in the i league uh, so the, the concentration was not really to you know get a, a respectable position or respectable finish in in, in the league table and uh, that probably uh, you no know, uh, just let them lose and we talked about lajong in the past as well so they are not really you know a complete team if you omit their for, foreigners and um, that was built in a way that uh, the exposure that they wanted to give out to all, all the indian players so shillong lajong is the second team in the i league to have an all indian squad mm. uh, arrows being the other shillong lajong is a team that has you no know, played so much in the top division that it it feels sad to see them go out this way but uh, i think it was planned it it was not uh, accepted as uh, the fate it was just uh, you know the way that they wanted to finish uh, in this season uh, i'm really happy at least uh, three wins uh, were, you know made out of uh, the number of games that they played uh, and the first one obviously uh, that it really you no know, matters is uh, beating churchill brothers mm. uh, that was a crucial game uh, for 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 crucial for, for churchill brothers and uh, lajong came out on top of that game So the, these are glimpses that you know this team is is, is really made of uh, hard, uh, strong players. But it really needs the support of you know the players uh, like the other teams do. So in, in that concern, I won't really you know uh, uh, take too much heart and and uh, see the team go out. But uh, I think this is planned well. I would say, uh, but. You no, know, it, it's sad to see a team go out. You know, after giving the best, after giving the best players to so many teams, so many clubs have uh, uh, have got players from Lujong, and it's a factory that churns out quality players year on year. Uh, but you know, we've seen seen the fate of so many clubs e- ending in this way. So mm-hmm. this is just another victim of uh, 
and an invisible road map for the indian football <laughs> the invisible road map where everybody is walking down the road and in the dark and they don't know where they're going to end up uh, it's such a sad situation just it's just i i can't even comprehend given the way you know the, since uh, shillong lajong came to i league in 2009 for 10 years they have been doing everything they, it's not like they came in with a lot of money they had limited budget they were one of the uh, you know cheapest clubs in the league and they still fought hard they still uh, got respectable finishes they stopped the giants so many memorable results where they beat uh, some some of the biggest clubs in the world uh, uh, got two semi finals and finals uh, of major tournaments and uh, yeah they won so many youth youth tournaments at one point they were uh, you know uh, these certain batches of these clubs dominate the youth uh, scene at one point pune fc was dominating shillong lajong had a period of dominance to the way minerva punjab have been dominating for the last two uh, years uh, in the junior leagues so yeah it's uh, it's sad to see them uh, go down like this and it's it's going to become a case study man the uh, shillong the way the whole thing changed when uh, shillong lajong came up uh, the the football scene the way uh, players were identified earlier on when they were playing for their schools uh, the amount of opportunities that was going to them and imagine three top division clubs from that small town and shillong is a city but once you go there you realize it's it's more of a uh, close knit small town out there and still that that created uh, you know rangajeet united royal waingdo uh, shillong lajong three major teams who were playing uh, in the i league and uh, now they have lost all three and now it, i mean now is the time to watch shillong to find out what happens when you take away uh, a real open league competition what what happens to football scene because now those players don't have don't have an outlet to the top division anymore so what kind of talent will the shillong lajong academy attract now what kind of uh, development will take place now that they don't know that if if the kids come in and uh, train there uh, they will be progressed to the first team directly so what happens now uh, are we going to lose more talents because of this we'll find out over the next few years how the shillong football scene evolves will be uh, you know it it will give an academic uh, a few thesis papers at least so yeah it's a it's a tragedy another tragedy that we have had to deal with uh, we've seen mumbai fc get relegated and shut down uh, uh, we've had uh, pune fc shut down we've had clubs leave the league now shillong lajong uh, it hurts a bit more than that hopefully they won't shut down hopefully they will bounce back one day hopefully they will carry on so we will take a short break on the other side we've got the big two games on saturday it's uh, chennai city versus minerva punjab and uh, gokulam kerala fc versus east bengal uh, the two simultaneous games that will decide who will be the next champions of india stay tuned Hello, 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 everybody! Welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please make sure you do. We are IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. As I mentioned over the last couple of weeks, we've been running a survey on our website. It's at ivmpodcast.com/survey. Please fill it out if you haven't already. And just so you guys know, there is a prize involved for the 25 people we will select at random, and we will send them an IVM Podcast mug. So this week on Cyrus says Cyrus's guest is Yash Bhanage, co-founder of Bombay Canteen and Opedro. He talks about the intricacies of the F&B industry in India and the origins of his ventures. On Geek Fruit, Tejas Dinkar and Janam talk about Netflix's latest series Russian Doll and why you should finish watching it right away. On Ganatantra, the host unpacks how political violence works in India and why the absence of large-scale communal riots does not necessarily indicate social harmony. On Dale Harate, the hosts are joined by Rama Prasad, who translated the Amaru Shataka, a collection of love poems from Sanskrit to Kannada. He talks about the immortal nature of this work. On Football Twaddle, the hosts discuss the Kepa and Sari incidents along with everything that happened in the Premier League. On the Habit Coach podcast, Ashton guides you through starting a sugarless life and the importance of substituting sugar with stevia. In the season finale of our Hindi show Cinemaya, Swati Bakshi is in conversation with Alankrita Shivastav, who discusses her journey from journalism to filmmaking and everything in between. And with that, let's continue with your show. It's the pressure 
that makes all the difference at points you know it was uh, whether you're going to talk about uh, the pressure that almost made mohan bagan buckle at kanti rawa before they finally got back and got a draw against bengaluru fc and won the league uh, or again uh, as mohan bagan buckled against uh, uh, aizol fc and uh, ended up losing that game 1-0 they were the ones with more to lose and yeah they lost uh all you can even look at uh, how uh, churchill brothers and east bengal have uh, buckled under pressure uh, towards the end of the season and ended up not winning the title churchill brothers actually developed a reputation for this in the early 2000s early and mid 2000s they were uh, i think runners up uh, about three four times before they ended up winning the league what will happen with chennai city what will happen when that moment is just in front of them when they are uh, staring at the league title when they are minutes away from getting their hands on it what happens when they are facing that possibility that scene and uh, there is a team playing against them that does not give a shit about whether they are about to make history or not they just want to get theirs from that game they just want to take as many points as they can they want three if they get one they want three so what 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 happens then when when they are playing on the last day of the league and they don't know what's happening in the other game and uh, they just playing in the dark just uh, the the minutes are ticking by and they don't know when the 90th minute to whistle comes whether they will have their hands on the trophy or not there there will be a trophy in the back room of course the lab trophy is at both venues but they don't know whether it will be brought out or it will stay right there so yeah uh, we got a glimpse of that man uh, kevin uh, when chennai city were playing churchill brothers and they were about to win the league there if they won the game they would have won the league a uh, smooth start and got that early lead then buckled is chennai city feeling the pressure man yeah slightly i <laughs> think uh, it it it's all about how you, how you finish not how you start yeah so right now it, it's you know it's in their hands still it was in their it was in their hands a couple of weeks back as well Mm. but i think they squandered their chances they had to take away the title much before reaching this stage so now it's the pressure time that that's telling them we really should have finished it long back yeah. and in, in a situation like this uh, you always have some looking over your shoulder you have your your you know your opponents running running at you mm. and they're just going to be tough because they're not playing a team which is easy to go past they playing a team which is being supported by uh, n number of uh, supporters of of the east bengal side as well and we have some mohan bagan supporters over there as well who are wanting chennai city to win so that east bengal don't get a chance and uh, i think it's not going to be easy for chennai city it's going to be easier for for east bengal to probably uh, be at a lesser uh, lesser pressure situation because chennai city i think they they they're just guilty of giving away too many points towards the end of the season and that is co- that is coming back to haunt them there was a race for uh, for 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 the golden boot with uh, uh, plaza and uh, pedro oh dear i think that really is just showed what was happening uh, and uh, we could see the selfless selfishness of uh, plaza he just wants that by hook of by crook he just you know wet so selfishly over there but for tenacity is not really about who's scoring the maximum goals for yeah. them it is just trying to do what they have done for the first half of the season for the most part of the season that was to score goals freely and keep themselves compact at the back that just needs to be continued in continue in this one final game mm-hmm. if they try to do something that is not tried out i think we are going to see a disaster yeah definitely man i mean it's 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 this is when uh, you know you understand the value of a real league you know that has a proper title race because right now as uh, chennai city are staring at the finishing line the the whole movie the flashback of their campaign is playing in their head like why did we get 
uh, sucked into a situation where we are 3-0 ahead against Neroca and we we end up drawing the game. Like if they had those two points, right now they are champions. Like they would they would be champions uh, on 24th February the moment they beat Mohan Bagan had they not drawn that game. Uh, Real Kashmir they lost to. It's not an easy game. Uh, we know nobody really wants to go to Kashmir anymore. Uh, part of the reason is that it's very hard to beat them over there. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's it's tough, man, for them to just look at and realize there were so many opportunities that we had back then to just seal the deal, to not even think about it anymore, and and it would have had had a huge impact. Like if Real Kashmir away was a draw for them. They would be right now on 41 points, which would ensure that they just have to go get a draw against uh, Minerva Punjab, and the title is there. That's a that's a very substantially different kind of target that they have, right? Now, if they have a draw and East Bengal win the game, then they have lost the title. So it nothing is sure right now. As long as they they are not ahead of Minerva Punjab at the game, they will not have any kind of peace of mind. I think East Bengal have a better position psychologically there because they know that a draw is not enough for them. They, uh, there's there's no permutation or combination. If they don't beat Gokulam Kerala FC in the last game, there is no scenario where they win the league because even if uh, Chennai City lose the game and both teams finish on 40 points, Chennai City win because they have better head to head. So if, for East Bengal, it's it's win or it's out of the question. Even if they win, it will be out of the question if Chennai City win as well. But for them, what they have to do, what what their purpose is, it's completely clear. But Chennai City are living in that grey area. And uh, I think the, the bigger worry for Chennai City is they cannot even say they are cruising when they'll be three nil at three nil at half time. Yeah. Because they've seen that going down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is messed up, man. Yeah, they they seriously cannot be. I mean, just you have you have seen this team do everything. They have played beautiful football. You know, they have scored goals that you can divorce your partner over. Uh, they have uh, done everything literally. They have beaten East Bengal. They have beaten Mohan Bagan. They have beaten Churchill Brothers uh, in the first leg. I think, or at least I think they did. Maybe it was a draw. I don't remember properly. Beaten Neroka. Everybody else who has been up there has gotten their share of beatings from uh, Chennai City. And uh, and still it's not done, it's not enough. Just come back to the situation of uh, East Bengal now. How repentant are the officials that they created a situation, that they did all the jhol uh, with the transfers that led to that temporary transfer ban? And, and how many points did they drop at the start of the campaign because of that? Because they did not have a full-strength squad. Because their major signings could only come into the team uh, a few uh, few weeks later, they lost three games in a row. I think at the start of the season, and I don't know if anybody has gone out and won the league after losing three games in a row. I mean, it's it's a huge. We're gonna, we're gonna have to look through 22 years of records to determine it. But I don't remember that ever happening. Usually, when you lose that many games in a row, you, the, the season is done for you. You're never getting it, right? I think, uh, yeah, uh, uh, they lost to Chennai City, they lost to Aizol FC away, then they lost to Minerva Punjab at home uh, between November and December. How do they turn back? That shows the grit that they have uh, under Alejandro Menezes, the the kind of consistency that they uh, produced after that. So. There's just a good chance that if uh, there was no transfer ban and that was crippling them earlier on the season, they would be winning the league right now. You know, they would be champions already. It's it's possible, isn't it? Yeah. So that that is the part of uh, your your uh, uh, wrongdoing of the past, and it, and it, it just comes back to haunt you at the time when you know, that it can't bite you even more worse than it. Yeah. We're talking about uh, transfer bans, it's about losing players, and not, uh, talking about uh, not having a full squad. So East Bengal have a big blow there. Joe Justin, <laughs> he's going to be missing from yeah. the final round of play. And how important, how crucial is he in the team? 
He is the highest Indian scorer for for uh, for East Bengal as well, and uh, he is running behind. Uh, he is running parallel to Enrique Escada, and uh, he is going to be missing that action. He is going to be on the bench. He's go, he is not he's not even going to be on the bench. He's going to be on the sidelines uh, somewhere on and the stands watching because he's got a ban for this game plus five other games. That's a total six match ban that he has received. For uh, that incident of spitting that he had, uh, you know, uh, he was involved in. Mm. So that's a big blow for uh, East Bengal there. Yeah, definitely. It's it's spit messed up, man. Uh, it's it's a bit. Uh, I I don't even know what to say. It in a way, it's so ironic that Jobby Justin got uh, got that six match ban for spitting. Because what do we know, East Bengal fans? to do <laughs> even the calcutta football league was happening they were losing the league title race and there were incidents of spitting uh, on on players officials from the fans at the east bengal ground and it's a uh, yeah well there are things about the football culture that that should be left behind and never brought back and spitting is one of them even mohan bagan has that uh, anyway uh, so that's that's what uh, their situation is i mean it's a, it's it must be very frustrating for them like i know i know about uh, 3 400 east bengal fans are traveling all the way to calicut and if you, if you know uh, if, if you have ever been to kerala you know it's not exactly very easy to travel to kerala from the eastern part of india it's it's the, the train lines are pretty bad uh, the flights cost a bomb nothing is well connected uh, from east to west uh, in that part of the country so yeah imagine spending that much uh, going in there knowing even if you win even if you do everything right on that particular day you might just end up losing like there there will not be a title there for you and how devastating that that could be i, I can't even imagine being in an east bengal fan shoe right now it's it's so much stress dude are you feeling it I am feeling it, but I think uh, if you are a true fan, if you are a true supporter, I think, uh, and you are with those travel junkies, I think you you should be able to be there. Mm. Uh, but I think there is more hope for East Bengal than uh, Chennai City because this uh, is just given up uh, slightly. Uh, I think uh, slightly. What you could say is uh, the pressure really you no know, didn't get them when they were doing well. Mm. It's just. that when they when they had a good lead over the top uh, of the so many teams i think that's when they started to feel a little more complacent and uh, chennai city are, are bearing the brunt of that now yeah definitely man it's like ah it's 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 very hard to be uh, ajit isaac or uh, uh, rohit ramesh or uh, anybody you know uh, who's who's feels for any of these clubs right now because there's so much tension and you just know this has been building up for such a long time and you still can't do anything it's like thursday now it's you're going to have to wait till saturday night to figure out uh, what resolution uh, has come uh, to this long drawn epic title race another character who has uh, become involved in this drama is ranjit pajaj the owner of uh, minerva punjab fc as you remember kevin before chennai city were pl- about to play churchill brothers he sent out a tweet saying my good friend uh, is about to uh, have his club become champions of india tomorrow and all that he pretty much gave out his all out support uh, for uh, chennai city to clinch the title and then chennai city end up losing the game and now it's in a situation where his good friend and the club he wants to win the league is playing uh, his team and it depends on how minerva punjab do at the last day of the league uh, that how how the league will be decided it's a defending champions couldn't win the league this time but they are going to decide the fate of the league they're the new churchill brothers of i league basically uh, or or even <laughs> even even churchill brothers played their part like ended up losing the game to sorry uh, they they beat uh, chennai city and now now they have given uh, east bengal a shot but Uh, Ranjit Bajaj, man, he's. What do you think is going through his head? Hey, it, it's not easy to be on the losing side after being champions, and uh, you know, but uh, all respect to uh, to to those team team owners and uh, officials who really you know take it in the right spirit, and uh, probably 
uh the same one and then uh, going back and realizing okay probably this was said too soon so it's, it's an awkward situation there and uh, you are facing uh, what is this campaign you are, you are the uh, defending campaign obviously outgoing campaign so the tricky situation to do this balance your ethics and uh, your professionalism there uh, yeah. i do understand you know, it, it, it's it, it's good and uh, i i like the sporting gesture just makes things healthier when we you know uh, have that banter around and uh, this makes it for more interesting uh, ma- match they build up yeah i mean uh, of course he's he's going to be there uh, trying to get get what's there for him uh, he i mean imagine minerva punjab might get relegated after this uh, if the leagues are restructured if uh, uh, you know so this might be the last televised match of minerva punjab in a very long time uh, not counting super cup of course super cup is there but the last televised league game that minerva punjab play and of course they will want to uh, get all the attention all the uh, uh, accolades that they can get and imagine what a beautiful part they will play if they can uh, you know get something from this game and help uh, east bengal win the league like uh, I think I think he will be he will become an East Bengal legend for for <laughs> I mean not exactly a legend but he will become a very adored figure over there that uh, of course East Bengal were playing Minerva Punjab Minerva Punjab tried hard but they lost gave a good fight respect there and uh, then they they held uh, Chennai City or beat Chennai City and suddenly that gives East Bengal a chance to become the champions and yeah man uh, that that's that's some road to immortality right there uh, but what's the what's the uh, prediction for you man because i know it this, this is a very tough thing to decide we're not looking at one game okay is this team going to beat that team or whatever what do you think happens on saturday night <laughs> uh things will will be kept on on that uh and uh, it's going to be keeping as uh, at the edge of the seat uh, right so the game uh, so a half time score also wouldn't uh, really satisfy us for for from either of the uh, matches but i think uh, as soon as we start the second half is where we uh, where the action will begin mm. uh, and a goal here and there in the second half will just uh, you know, spice up things and i see goals coming in both games i mm. I, i won't see a uh, a barren game uh, where you know both teams are trying to just be saved by scoring a goal or two mm. uh, because especially for chennai city they've yeah. scored so many goals they've just you know been free flowing and this is the game where they want they free flowing to get you know get all over the place and uh, beautiful goals are expected uh, some great free kicks so chennai city are in the hunt to you know uh, uh, have the favorite uh, uh i think they they will end up with the maximum goal scoring player uh, pedro will take it uh, unless uh, uh laga decides not to pass the ball to anybody and just uh, take it all by himself uh, but coming back to the prediction of uh, the chennai city and uh, minerva game uh, i'm looking at a 3-1 at least mm. the 3-1 mm. well we were looking at a 3-1 at the niroka game as well <laughs> Uh, and then i think uh, east bengal will probably have it easier uh, yeah. they should see 2-0 but uh, in a chennai city by by the uh, the character that they've shown throughout the season i think that is to be kept in mind not uh, the form that is right now uh, it, it is uh, for 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 chennai city to take it but uh, it is going to be edge of the seat for everybody yeah i mean if you are looking at uh, the games the matchups on paper uh east bengal should win chennai city should also win that's that's the you know you know these are the two better teams but you don't know what happens uh, when you are having a match under such a uh, pressure pressure cooker situation and just when you were talking about man i was trying to imagine the scores uh, the half time scores and uh, i agreed with the uh, with the chennai city uh, sorry i agreed with the east bengal and gokulam kerala fc game i just had this flash in my head of a half time score of uh, east bengal 2 gokulam nil and uh, chennai city 1 minerva punjab 1 imagine imagine that at half time imagine that at 60 minutes imagine that at 70 minutes imagine that at freaking 80 minutes what happens how many heart attacks like there was there was i am not i'm saying this 
you know in a in a lighter mood but there were actually heart attacks in the 24 25 season uh, during the uh, league decider one person was hospitalized uh, when when he had chest trauma a mohan bagan fan uh, while watching that game uh, between bengaluru and mohan bagan similar things <laughs> might happen it, it's a sad reality but you know there's there's going to be people who will be losing their mind if if such a thing happens even might happen on chennai city side you never know but imagine what might happen imagine the the state of our nails man if if it's 75 minutes uh, east bengal are beating gokulam kerala no uh, no issues but it's it's a, it's even between minerva punjab and uh, chennai city oh man uh, i don't know that that might become uh, for for the fans involved a fever dream uh, or 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 one of the best dreams they have ever had or a complete nightmare and it will happen uh, on on the turn of a second that's that's what we're talking about when we are discussing a title race like this uh, in the asia's uh, most entertaining league of the continent i would say most competitive definitely in the recent years and uh, yeah if i leave is about to die is there a better way to die man that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the quote of the week quote of the year quote of the decade probably i don't know man uh, <laughs> let's just see how it turns out uh, the uh, one of the games will be on star sports one i think the gokulam kerala versus uh, east bengal game that will be on star sports one uh star sports three will have the chennai city uh, versus uh, uh manava punjab game uh, there's a bengali commentary available for the uh, for the <laughs> for those who actually want the commentators to have uh, they want to listen to the commentators having heart attacks watch it on star sports one bangla of course for me i think it will be one game on tv the other game on hotstar uh, because <laughs> literally i have to keep a look at both things what's happening at the same time uh two screens in front of me and uh, yeah my heart in my sleeves are about to jump out of my mouth thanks for being here kevin uh, thanks everybody for listening to this uh, week's podcast we will come back next week week with uh, good news for some bad news for somebody else but an awesome uh, review of whatever goes down whatever epic shit that will be written about in history books that goes down uh, on saturday night So come back to us next week. Uh, until then, if you are listening to this on YouTube, uh, like, share, subscribe. If you are uh, uh, listening to this uh, on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, uh, or whatever other podcasting platform that you like, do keep listening. Uh, do come back regularly uh, to our podcast and download the IVM Podcasts app uh, and go to the IVM uh, Podcast dot com website where you can find. the best podcasts of this country and uh, if you're going to keep an eye on what's happening if if you are feeling so tense if you are having such a nervous breakdown while uh, the games are on that you can't even bear to look at them you can follow at the rick tfg football on twitter because we will be carrying live updates of both the games uh, so you don't have to look at it if you are scared you can just read about it and you will get both the games being updated in the same place so can anything be better than that so again thanks for listening come back next week and best of luck to chennai city and east bengal and minerva punjab and gokulam and kerala fc as well you know we're not forgetting about you thanks again Filter coffee is a fascinating beverage. You need to pick the right beans, blend them in the right proportion, roast them to perfection, and slow brew at the right temperature to get the perfect cup. Which is exactly like great conversations as well. You need to track down the most interesting minds, get them into their zone, and settle down for an unhurried, unscripted chat. And coffee for me is always, always, always best enjoyed with friends. I am Karthik Nagarajan, and do share my table. as i meet some of the most interesting people i know and sit them down for a strong cup of coffee and an even stronger conversation join me every wednesday for a freshly brewed episode this is not frappe this is the filter coffee podcast
माणसानं गोल गप्प्यासारखी असतात हाय हॅलो करताना वेगळी आणि बोलताना वेगळी आणि गप्पा मारताना वेगळी मित्र झाली की वेगळी आणि शत्रू म्हणून वेगळी थोडक्यात दिसणारी वेगळी आणि असणारी वेगळी कधी आंबट कधी गोड कधी तिखट तर कधी चमचमीत आणि कधी कधी हॉट अँड स्पायसी सुद्धा आणि म्हणूनच गप्पा सॉरी सॉरी गोल गप्पा विथ तृप्ती खामकर फक्त तुमच्यासाठी दर बुधवारी आय व्ही एम पॉडकास्टच्या ऍप वर वेबसाईट वर किंवा युट्यूब चॅनल वर सुद्धा ऐकू शकता तुम्ही आमचा पॉडकास्ट वेगवेगळ्या पॉडकास्ट प्लॅटफॉर्म वरती ऐकू शकता फक्त सर्च करा गोल गप्पा विथ तृप्ती खामकर आणि आमचा पॉडकास्ट ऐकत राहा